Friday Science Fun Fact this week is about an actually scary prion disease. On last week's video, a ton of people commented about prions being their worst feared infectious disease, and I agree that prions are scary, but most of them are not infectious. Prions are better known as major prion protein, and prion stands for proteinaceous infectious particle. It's expressed highly in your nervous system, but it's also found in your lungs, your heart, your kidneys, your GI tract, etc. You have lots of normal prion protein in you right now. The real fun fact is that we don't really know what it does. We can knock it out in mice, and the mice seem to be perfectly fine. Prion diseases happen when the prion protein is misfolded. For any protein to be functional, it has to be folded perfectly correctly. But in every other protein we know, if it's misfolded, it just becomes non-functional. It won't kill you, and it won't damage other proteins. Misfolded prion proteins are contagious, though. As soon as there's one misfolded protein, when it touches another properly folded prion, it causes the proper one to change and to become misfolded. This causes an exponential cascade in your system where essentially every prion protein in your body becomes misfolded and you die a slow, torturous death. Prion diseases are incurable. We have no way of stopping them. And they can start in three different ways. First, spontaneously, meaning no known cause, and this is called sporadic Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, sporadic fatal insomnia, and a couple others. Second, acquired, meaning you get it from prions entering your body, either due to contamination during surgery, uh, through kuru, which is cannibalism, or eating animals with prion disease, like chronic wasting disease or mad cow disease, or variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Third, you can get it genetically through familial CJD, GSS syndrome, or fatal familial insomnia. <laughs> Folks, I have hyperactive ADHD, and I'm allergic to gluten in a way that doesn't give me deathly anaphylaxis, but it does give me insomnia due to the massive release of histamine. Insomnia is the bane of my existence. I have to be very careful with the foods I eat and the medications I take because there are plenty that do give me insomnia. So when I tell you that slowly losing the ability to sleep over the course of a year and a half is the worst way imaginable to die. And that's what happens with sporadic and fatal familial insomnia. <laughs>